Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt Thomas Thomas. I'm here with Moderator, and we're watching the Tuskers Co. vs. Vydra. The Tuskers have gone with a very interesting Kaidi comp with Triple Claymore with heavy missiles, a Hugen Osprey, Rapid Light Navy Ospreys, Light Missile Jackdaws, and a Skybreaker. Mord, what has Vydra brought? So Vydra has brought Neek and Noiser in their flagship Bargast, a Scimitar, heavy missile direct Navy issues, Rapid Light Orthrus Stormbringer, and then uh, some Light Missile Jackdaws. All Jackdaws in this composition are Light Missiles. Um, first thing of note, so we have a Huggin on grid, and I can't help but feel like um, that is almost um, a waste of a ship, and points given these two setups are going to be uh, kiting each other at range. Um, so immediately both teams are kind of uh, deciding to pull range, and they're uh, painting each other. Um, Tuskers winning, though, the tracking disruption setup, um, we can see that Vidra might only have actually regular tracking guidance disruption on their jackdaws, which is tragic if that's the case. We can see that the Bargas, Navy Drakes, and Orthrus on Vidra just aren't going to be able to project across the arena in the same way that Tuskers can. Yeah, and Tuskers are kiting backwards, trying to extend that little bit of range they have. I think they believed Vydra were going to push forward to get that little bit of extra damage. So as they've pulled back, there's just missiles expiring in the air between them. To go back to a point you mentioned earlier about the Hugan, I think the Hugan was brought into this comp for one missile only, for one reason only, which was to allow missiles to apply to uh, logistics frigates. As I'm saying this, though, finally Head Candia in the Drake Navy issue was getting hit by missiles. Yeah, I think, though, we're going to see that Head is pulling uh, range, and I don't believe he's going to have any trouble getting uh, topped up by the Scimitar. He's just hitting the very, very edge of what um, light missiles can reasonably project to. Um, right now, we see Tuskers deciding to burn up um, in the arena, and Vidra is just not really propping at all we can see that they um you know have a lot of speed but they're not using it right now they're currently in the position of figuring out what are we going to do now that we're in missile ships that have less range being guidance disrupted and how are we going to play around that if i'm tuskers given my paint i think i probably want to try to maybe snap off some jackdaws to um, make my core a little bit more survivable we see some chip damage onto makitia who is being kept up pretty easily yeah, we're seeing damage on Connell, Ormad, and the Scimitar. That bonus range is just being that much helpful that they can pound the logistics from the other side of the field, and it's already in low shields. Tuskers have just dipped into range and are hitting it hard now. The Logi drones just can't keep it alive. Okay, yeah, so there's basically no Logi drones right now onto Carnival. We see that um, right now Vidra is going basically all in with cavalry charts to try to make um, those heavy missiles basically collapse on top of each other and, and head each other sooner. The death will talk about that um, later. Carnival using three, now four of his ASBs. Um, man, he's going all in and he's having to break off because he's getting painted and hit hard by this Tusker's core that just frankly outranges things. Um, right now we see the Drake webs. Navies and the Bargas trying to commit um, webs from um, that <laughs> Hugan onto the Navy Drake and to the Bargas to keep those bonus grams off of things. And they're trying to force a Logi trade with Scylla, um, now dropping into low shields, getting painted by the... Uh, yeah, it looks like it's coming out here, Maud. We're seeing Cilia and the Osprey dropping down, and the Scimitar of Carnival is just about using his last boosts. Logistic drones are trying to keep Cilia alive, but it looks like it's going to trade Logi for Logi. He's finally going into structure. Both of them are, and it looks like it's going to be a Logi trade. And I believe Maud is gone. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, fellow commentator, so I'll just keep going. We're seeing Jack, the Tusker's Jackdaw of JJ Yakin. Now that logistics is down, he is slowly going down, and we've lost him as well. Whereas uh -huh. Tuskers in their triple claymores are shooting head Candia in that Drake Navy. They are The Tuskers are trying to trade their top end, whereas... Hello, Hello Mizia. While Vydra are trying to clear out the small end and gain a little bit of control back. Yeah, so, yeah, so we have the... reconnected, fortunately, here. Um, Jackdaws that were tracking disruption, getting dis tracking disruption, are, uh, you know, finally falling uh, for Tuskers. That's going to provide a lot of utility um, to the Vydra side. 
Um, as those tracking disruption does fall, it allow them to project across the arena. Um, we see now the Drake Navy going down into um, low uh, hulk here as Vidra is trading out for that Hugin. Uh, basically, I, I kind of like that trade if you're in Vidra's position, getting rid of kind of those webs, getting rid of paints. Um, and the Barg has just been kind of able to kite out and just apply better than either of these claymores um, on the Tusker side. Yeah, a big thing to mention is Claymores are ever so slightly faster than Drake Navy issues. So if they if Tuskers do manage to clear some of this low end, they can kite out. The Barkus just doesn't look fast enough to catch up with everyone. We're seeing Osprey Navies and Authors just go down like nobody's business in this massive slug match where people are dying at the drop of a hat. Yeah, so crucially, though, we can see that the Vidra side has all their jackdaws left while um, Tuskers has none of those. And that's going to be very important um, as this match continues. Those uh, rapid light missiles, um, or those light missile ships are going to want to kite out. And we can see that um, the Ops Osprey Navy is dropping faster than the Orthrus. And that's basically going to be because of those jackdaws uh, and Pandy and, of course, Nika still alive. I mean, the points are basically dead even right now, 38 to 39. Uh, but, I mean, it's going to be pretty even once the Osprey drops and the Orthrus is just surviving ever so slightly longer. Yeah, once this Orthrus goes down, the points are going to be dead even. It is now entirely down to whether the triple Claymores can out-kite these missiles and apply some of their long-range damage. They are applying a little bit of damage to Pandy in the other Drake Navy issue now. Do you think three Claymores can beat out a Barghest and a set of Jackdaws and support wing? Um, if the Jackdaws and uh, Barghast play this correctly, I don't believe they can. We can see that Nika Noiser um, was attempting to run down um, one of these Claymores, possibly using their bonus, um, you know, utility in that very um, officer, um, you know, scram and maybe new. And already we can see the Jackdaws are popping. If those Jackdaws, those Jackdaws really need to want to pull range. You do not want to be in range of heavy missiles. Um, Mira Sheev down into pretty low armor, but I think that's going to be Nika Noiser uh, possibly having to, uh, you know, reload what are going to be rapid heavy missiles. Um, Tusker's up six points right now um, with three minutes left to go. This match will likely go to points. We see Jim Raynor uh, taking damage. We see Kidlin taking damage. Um, and looking at Kidlin, um, there's nothing um, at actually hitting him as far as drones. He's just you know, having to get chipped away uh, by these heavy missiles. He's currently burning away, uh, basically, in sharpshooter mode, does fall. Um, Tusker's now up by a total of what will be 14 points. So if that Claymore of Mira Chief does fall, and it looks like he will, um, Vidra is in a position where they are now up four points, um, with time being what it is. Pandy basically has to live to win, if that means using micro jump drives, um, from those beacons, or doing anything he can, Mode. basically, to pull range from um, these claymores. Look at the Tusker's defense bar. They are buffer-fit claymores. They have the maximum life expectancy, and that is why that claymore of Mira Chief was able to survive for so long, because he just has that larger amount of tank than the Vydra Reloaded uh, Navy Drakes are. They fit with a little bit of Ansel, which you can see, whereas... Tuskers have just went max EHP numbers. Oh no. Oh no, Pandy's actually throwing this match. He's burning into the Claymores. He's now turning around, but it was too late. He's going down into armor and he's going to be dropping into hull soon. He actually he actually threw that match by burning into um, the Tuskers' core, basically getting hit by those heavy missiles. Um, the Barghest is known for being a very fast, very mobile ship. We can see Nick and Noise are going 1,700 meters a second. But Pandy is now actually probably just barely breaking range um, from the Claymores. We can see that they're trying to burn around Nika Noiser and, and get into that last bit of fall off to, you know, hit Pandy. But they, Neuron um, and they, Glasty are burning away. They're going for the MJD beacon. They're hoping to MJD over the Vargas and to get back within range of Pandy. Uh, Neuron taking significant damage, and you're right, he is burning straight towards an MJD beacon as fast as he possibly can, and Nika Noiser is very, very close. Reload? I don't think that he's going to be he's on reload. reload in a second here. 
Okay, so Glassy is running interference on Nika Noiser. He's trying to ram Neuron and breaks off, and he does finally finish off Neuron. Okay, so with the point situation being what it is, um, even if that Navy Drake does go down, it will not be enough points. Um, Vidra Reloaded has won the match in the last 40 seconds here. Excellent playing by uh, Nika Noiser, uh, bringing it back from the very jaws of defeat. If they kill the Navy Drake and the Stormbringer, there's still a point short. It's game over. Yeah, I'm just, you know, doing kind of the mental math there as there's, you know, 10 seconds, uh, you know, on the clock, both teams, um, you know, giving uh, good fights, a lot of respect in local to, uh, you know, two tournament veteran teams, Tuskers having won the Alliance tournament before, as well as Vydra. Um, this was an absolutely titanic matchup. I'm sure the desk has plenty to say about that as we send it back to them.